اللهم صل على محمد يا رب صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد يا رب صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل على أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وصلى الله تعالى على سيرنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين وبعد My dear and most respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be with each and every one of you. Today we continue this amazing series on the topic of blessings of salawat. Based on this one ayah in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 56, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا محمد. Verily Allah and His angels send blessings on the Prophet. O you who believe, send blessings on him and salute him with a worthy salutation. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us. To be from among those who would constantly and continuously and perpetually recite salawat on his beloved messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the fifth part of our series on blessings of salawat. In the last lecture or discourse, we concluded with the point which states that salawat contributes to the completeness and wholesome nature of a speech which begins with praise of Allah and salawat on the noble messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next benefit we want to mention is the following. Salawat removes roughness, harshness and sternness from the abd or servant who is frequent in reciting invocations on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Ruh Sharif or Salawat on the Noble Messenger of Allah. It removes roughness, harshness and sternness from the character of that person. There are some people who they may claim that they are naturally harsh and stern and rough. In, in their character, in their personality. And sometimes they may say that, you know, this is how I am. I, I can't change. I've tried to do this in the past and I just can't change. Now, this roughness and harshness in a person's character is not a praiseworthy characteristic. It is not something that people like. If if you are rough and harsh and stern in, in your actions, in your sayings, uh, people would not want to be around you. People would not be attracted to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ That if you were harsh and stern and rough in your actions. If your heart was harsh and stern, 
then they would have uh, run away from you, flee from you, go away from you, meaning the, 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 the Sahabas and the people of his time. But no, people were attracted to him. People want to be with him, the companions wanted to spend every moment of their life with him if that was possible. And every time they would leave his presence, their greatest yearning, their most passionate desire would be to return into his presence. They would only leave his presence because it was necessary for them to do something in life, in their daily activities, their work, uh, their, the, the, their duties and jobs and responsibilities to their family, to themselves to go and uh, get some rest and to sleep or to eat and so on. It is only those necessities that would take them away from him. But whatever time they could spend with him, they would cherish those moments because of his personality, because of who and what he was. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you were harsh and stern, hard-hearted, they run away from you. There is this amazing description of the Prophet والسلام, Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah in his Shama'il al muhammadiyya wal Khasail al Mustafawiyya uh, mentions the Prophet والسلام, describes him in the words of the companions uh, walking in the streets of Medina. They say that when the Prophet والسلام, would be walking in the streets of Medina, the children of Medina, the children would see him and they would rush towards him. They would run towards him. They would want to be with him. They would walk along with him, uh, happy and joyful. And this was the messenger of Allah. This was the best creation of Allah, khayr khalqillah. This was the leader of all the prophets of Allah. Sayyid al Mursaleen. He had this great maqam, this great status with Allah. And even with that, this is how he was that even the children would rush to be with him whenever they see him. Compare that, and this is an amazing image, an amazing scenery uh, to, 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 to imagine this. That the Prophet والسلام, walking in the streets of Medina and how the children rush towards him, not run away from him. Compare this with some of us today, some of uh, uh, Muslim Islamic scholars, Islamic leaders, uh, Imams, Sheikhs and so on. We are so serious all the time and so stern and harsh that people don't want to come near us. Uh, some, for some of us, uh, people see us and they want to move away from us uh, because they're wondering, is he, is he going to send me to Jahannam now? Is he going to accuse me of something and say that whatever I'm doing is bid'ah and shirk and I'm going to hellfire and so on? The Prophet ﷺ was not like this. He would invite people to Jannah, call them to Jannah, encourage them to do the things that would take them to Jannah. And it is only those who were away or who chose the path to be away from belief in Allah who would uh, openly oppose Allah, the Messenger of Allah, then they would be warned of the punishment of Jahannam, of hellfire. But for someone who is sincerely striving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though they may have their weaknesses, they may have their shortcomings, they, they, they may be engaged in wrong actions, but they, they recognize it's wrong and they're striving to be better. Then we don't want to discourage those people uh, by criticizing them and sending them, telling them that they're on their way to the fire of hell. No, we want to encourage them and, and invite them to the, way, the path that would lead them to Jannah. 